This video will go through how to add simple, basic interactivity to your lessons pages so you can keep in touch with your students throughout their learning experience. There are several different tools you can use within Vula to add some basic interactivity to your lessons pages to encourage frequent interaction with your students throughout their learning experience. These don't require you setting up anything complicated or doing anything web intensive like a student webinar or anything like that. These are all simple basic tools you can add into any lessons page pretty much wherever you want um, with limited functionality. The tools we'll be discussing today are checklists, comments, questions and polls, and student pages. We'll start with checklists. So checklists are a very simple way of adding, well, a checklist into your Vula lessons page. It's a functionality with, sorry, it's a tool with limited functionality so it can't do all that much, but you can add it to, as I've done here, create a little bit of the learning objectives for this module. Students will be able to look at this and tick off when they think they have learned the various different tools. The checklist reporting feature is quite limited. You click on this little view the checklist progress over here to see it. And of course mine doesn't help because I'm a lecturer but you'll see it just gives a list and then a list of all the different questions you have added to your checklist. This works perfectly fine for smaller classes, but for large classes with hundreds of students, you'll just form one long list of students. So the checklist tool is not a particularly good tool for easy reporting, but it works perfectly fine for small classes. To add a checklist, we use the normal add content button, click, scroll down, and we add a checklist. Give the checklist a title, which you can then hide from your students if necessary, a description of what the checklist is, and however many different checklist items you want. You can of course remove them at any point as well. Okay. Moving on, we'll discuss the comments feature. Now the comments feature can be added to any page at any point and allows students to comment on whatever is above or below that comments feature. It could be directly after a video, it could be after a set of learning resources, it could be on a separate page. The comments feature is dynamic, it's quite easy to use. So I've set up a small one here about March lilies, which are now flowering in Cape Town. Over here we have a basic text only comment with an unlinked link. Over here, I respond to my own comment adding the fact that you can, in fact, directly hyperlink in a comment. And over here, I've actually inserted a picture into the comment. How to do all of these things? We add comments tool over here. And you'll see there we've got add comment. Now, the comments tool can be set up in various different ways. You can make the comments anonymous or not create gradebook items for your comments. And you can also release items at later points. This is a more complicated functionality. We don't, we suggest you do not use it unless you're very comfortable with using Vula. For the student experience, how it works is you click on add comment and you'll see a normal WYSIWYG box. You can add quotes, you can add pictures, you can add videos, you can type whatever you want, you can highlight, make different colors, a wide range of different functionality in that comments box. As mentioned before, comments can um, be graded, which means they will add a gradebook item. This can be just a simple thing that you're checking in with the students, have they made a comment or not? One, zero if they haven't commented. I wouldn't recommend this as part of your normal formative or summative assessment, but as a way to check who is still engaging with your content. Next on, we're going to move to questions or polls. These are very short and simple questions. They are similar to the MCQ questions and quizzes, but more limited in their functionality. They're a way of getting some basic feedback and potentially making a poll of student feedback so students can see what each other's answers are. There are only two kind of question types, which are multiple choice questions, MCQs, and a short essay of free text. I suggest you stick with the MCQ function as it's a bit easier and more straightforward. And questions cannot be reattempted. So unlike quizzes where you can submit multiple different, um, or you can set up a quiz to submit multiple times, a question or a poll is a once-off answer or don't answer. 
the poll function, if you activate it, will give everyone a sense of who answered which question. So you can see we've had two users answer correctly that Sir Ramposa is in fact the president of our country in 2020. How to do that is, here's how I set up my, my question section. I choose multiple choice, a short answer. I put in my question check, text. I add all the possible answers and I tick whichever ones are correct. Of course, only the last one is correct. By activating this show students a graph function, creates the poll. And I, in fact, have graded this question as well so that I can actually allocate marks to the students if they get the answer correct or incorrect. And you can put some little text as a response text when students answer the question, whether it's correct or incorrect. You'll see correct, that's where it is. In the grade book, I can then go and mark the various students' MCQs. Okay. Lastly, and the most complicated function we're going to talk about today is student pages. Now, student pages are a quite sophisticated tool. It's a place for students to work with Invula themselves and create their own content, either individually or as groups. As individuals, only the student themselves and the lecturer will have editing access to the content. In groups, all members of the group have equal editing access, which does mean that care students can go and delete other people's content. So use this tool with caution. I'll show you how to create a student page. So over here, I've already set up some individual student pages. And you'll see that I, as a lecturer, have created my own page. And the demonstration students on this course have yet to create their own pages. If you look at my page, it looks exactly like a standard Vula Lessons page, with the only difference being I have a limited set of content that I can add as a student. Text, embedding content, links, and subpages. Here's a little brief description of how to use the student pages. And as you know, anyone who accesses the demonstration site, it's available to anyone in the UC community. If you click on the link, you can add yourself as a member so you can read through this at your leisure. But you can see we have text options, we can insert images, and we can embed video. So the student pages can be used as a place for students to work continuously inside a project, building the content over time, rather than, for instance, submitting multiple assessments. And they can do so as individuals or as groups. Right. How to set up a group page? So these are individual pages, which mean only myself as a student and myself, in this case, as a lecturer, can access these pages. To set up a groups page, we're going to add new content, add student content. You see here's the student content. And we're going to edit this so that student pages will be jointly owned by all members of a group. So I've already set up two small groups for this course. So I'm going to say both group one and group two can create pages. And when we update, we see that group one and group two now can create pages in this group functionality. Like with the comments feature, you can make the pages anonymous, you can create gradebook items, and you can add things like comment sections or make comments anonymous and grade those comments. There are more sophisticated features like adding peer review and peer evaluation to the pages. I would recommend against those unless you're very comfortable with Vula because they're a little bit more complicated to set up. And lastly, you can set pages that students can only see their own page if they are working on private content or otherwise are a bit shy and they don't want to let everyone see all, um, the content that they're building on the page. All right, thank you very much.